Hey guys and welcome to this video. In this video we'll be proving the theorem that states that the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle supported by the same chord. So what we are required to prove is that this angle between the tangent and the chord, angle QBC, is equal to the angle supported by the same chord BQ and that angle is angle QPB. To prove this theorem, we're going to go ahead and construct a diameter and we're going to name this point, point D. Then we're going to join the points D and P, so we're going to construct the line DP. Make sure to write down any constructions that you have made. So we're going to write down that we've constructed the diameter DOB and line DP. Now I want you to focus on the tangent BC. We're going to name these angles over here. So the first angle we have here is this angle QBC and we also have the angle OBQ. We're going to name this angle B1 and this we're going to name it angle B2. Likewise, we're going to name the angles over here. This angle DPQ, we're going to name that P1 and the angle QPB, we're going to name that P2. Now looking at the line OB, line OB is going from the center of the circle to the circumference, so it's a radius. Whenever you have a radius and a tangent, the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent at the point of contact at the point B. So we know now that OB is perpendicular to the tangent BC. Yes, I know that AC is the tangent and I could have said that OB is perpendicular to AC, but I'm just trying to focus on these angles over here. That's why I'm speaking about BC, because from B to C, the point B is the point where the tangent makes contact with a circle. And if you also looked at it from this side, from A to B, B is also the point where the tangent makes contact with a circle. So I'm just focusing on the part of the line BC, the part of this tangent. So because we know that OB is perpendicular to BC, that would mean that angle B1 plus angle B2 give us 90 degrees. And our reason for that would be that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. Now I want you to focus on the diameter DOB. Now we know that if we have a diameter and this diameter is supporting an angle at the circumference, it would mean that this angle is equal to 90 degrees. So this angle DPB, that is equal to 90 degrees. So that would mean that angle P1 plus angle P2 is equal to 90 degrees because it's an angle at the circumference supported by a diameter, or you could say it's the angle in a semicircle. Now, since we know that angle B1 plus angle B2 is equal to 90 degrees, and angle P1 plus angle P2 is also equal to 90 degrees, then this therefore concludes that angle B1 plus angle B2 is equal to angle P1 plus angle P2 because they're both equal to 90 degrees. Now let's focus on the arc DQ. This arc DQ is supporting the angle at the circumference B1, but it's also supporting the angle at the circumference P1. So this would mean that angle P1 and angle B1 are equal. So angle P1 is equal to angle B1 because angles at the circumference supported by the same arc are equal. Now because angle P1 is equal to angle B1, and here we know that angle B1 plus angle B2 is equal to P1 plus P2, so it means that angle P1 and angle B1 are equal. Therefore, this will prove that angle B2 is actually equal to angle P2. Another way you can understand this is like this. So since we know that angle P1 and angle B1 are equal, Let's say they were both equal to 30 degrees. So we know that angle B1 plus angle B2 should give us 90 degrees. But since angle B1 is equal to 30 degrees, then this will mean that angle B2 is equal to 60 degrees so that they both add up to 90. Likewise, angle P1 is also equal to 30 degrees. 
So this is just an example. It's not actually equal to 30 degrees, but just to make you understand this. So angle P1 is also equal to 30 degrees. Then plus angle P2 would give you 90 degrees. So that would therefore mean that angle P2 is equal to 60 degrees as well. So that's why angle B2 and angle P2 would also be equal. And so we can conclude that angle B2 is equal to angle P2. Now, remember what we were required to prove. We we're required to prove that the angle QBC, so QBC, which is angle B2, so angle QBC is equal to angle P2. And P2 is actually angle QPB. So angle QPB. So there we go. We have proved that the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle which is supported by the same chord.